So we can only film from this side because I forgot to put this earring back in this morning because I was slept on it and it I was like poking and just like <laughs> do this for the rest of the day. Hey guys, it's Carla. I'm here in the BA Test Kitchen and today I'm going to make my favorite method for making pastry dough, which has no special equipment, no food processor, and doesn't get messed up. And then we're gonna take that dough and make a super um, rustic apple tart where you don't even peel the apples because why? why? So super simple, all-purpose flour, a little bit of salt, sugar, toss, toss, just use your, your, use your hands. And then with one of these handy dandy bench scrapers, which I'm gonna use throughout the whole dough making process, this is four ounces, half a cup of unsalted butter. So again, just using my hands, I'm tossing the butter into the flour mixture, and I'm doing that just to coat the outside of these cubes. They're gonna wanna stick anyway, but this way, um, it's kind of like a little bit of insulation. Okay, don't need the cutting board again. Get that out of there. And now, another part that I really enjoy is just dumping it right onto the work surface. Normal pastry dough recipes at this point would tell you to either smash the butter in with your hands or use a pastry cutter to do it. This is a little bit different. I have a little extra flour here. I'm gonna flour the pin. Um, instead of cutting the butter into the flour, I'm going to roll the butter into the flour. And what happens here is that instead of making little pea-sized bits, it creates these long sheets. So at this point I have my sheets of butter, they're coated in flour. I'm just gonna put everything back into the bowl. And when you get a little bit more comfortable with this method, you can stay on the work surface, um, but it is nice at this point to kind of be contained. And this is a little extra, but we need three tablespoons of ice water. Take a fork. Really just tossing this through. I'm not, I'm not trying to do anything with the butter at this stage. I'm just trying to distribute that liquid. Okay, so now the moisture has been absorbed or at least distributed. So now I'm just rolling it out and it's not supposed to hold together at this point. It seems a little bit weird, but I'm gonna try to fold the dough onto itself like you would fold a letter into thirds. I always start at the top, start at the bottom, whatever works. And just kind of flipping, it's not folding. I'm just sort of like getting everybody to go to the middle and then starting from the other end and folding up and over. But like I said, this is a pile of like rubble at this point, so don't be weirded out that you don't have dough yet. It takes a couple of times. And then I just use the straight edge again, get everybody back together into a little rectangle, using the thing, smush it over, and just kind of be light. I'm like trying not to touch it too much with my hands. And then same thing again. All right, so this is the third time. Usually when I make this dough, that's all it takes. But what I can see is that like most of it on the surface has that creamy look of like an, em an emulsified dough. I'm gonna fold it one more time and I'm using my hands to form it into a disc, okay? If it looks a little drier than doughs that you've made in the past, just trust. While it sits in the fridge at this point, a little cl plastic, I almost called it clasp Plast dip, plastic. Um, taking a sheet of plastic wrap and you can actually use the plastic wrap to help gather it without worrying about smushing it down too much. So half an hour, see you later. Zingo Zango. I want to Frisbee this. I know it's not right. So I'll just be normal. Oh, Rhoda's ready. Okay, hold on. We're gonna UFO this disc. Did you play ultimate? <laughs> Fling, <Got it>. yay! <laughs> Cold dough is easier to roll out. It also has rested, so the gluten isn't so activated and the butter is nice and chilled back down and I'm not gonna get as much sticking and smushing. You don't need to go crazy on the flouring, but I also don't think there's any great advantage to like under flouring too like you're not don't be a hero you know what i mean give yourself and give the dough the flour that it needs to not stick chris morocco taught me 
turn the dough 90 degrees. You guys know Chris Morocco? I used to complain, why, why Chris Morocco? Why does my dough want to split at the edges so much? And he said, you know, turning it 90 degrees like every other pass of the pin is not overkill. I started doing that. I did notice an improvement in my cracks around my edges. We're using this. This is called a removable bottom fluted tart pan. And I'm going out to about an eighth of an inch thick. All right, there's a couple of different ways to get the dough into the pan. The method that I like the most is just to take the dough and roll it onto the pin. Being mindful now not to like press down on the pin because that would smush the dough together. And just kind of getting all the way to the end. Brush as much of it as possible onto your shirt as you go. And then instead of bringing the dough to the tart pan, bring the tart pan to the dough. All right, so now you're just gonna unroll, leaving, like leave a lot of slack, right? You don't wanna do this tightly because you wanna be able to pick the dough up and push it into the pan. Starting at one edge, kind of just lifting it up and pressing it down so that, I call this where the, where the floor meets the walls, there's good contact. And I'm just using this like flat part of my knuckle. Take the rolling pin again, and I'm gonna use this just to zipper across the dough. So now I do wanna press down. And it's like a giant cookie cutter, but from upside down. Wow, that looks so satisfying. <laughs> Feels pretty good too. And then you get this little skirt of dough. So now I'm gonna let the dough chill again, just cause I have to make the filling anyway. First thing, just cause the butter takes a few minutes to brown, I'm just gonna get that started. Half a stick of butter. I'm using my hands for everything today. Um, it might be a little bit more than I need, but I'd rather have enough to brush around. So it's already half melted, starting to foam. If you like making caramel and kind of watching that magical process of something turning from one thing into another, then you will also like making brown butter. A lot of excitement in the butter. A little bit of swirling. And then you can kind of smell it at the moment that it goes from golden to brown. And I just want to pull it here. It's gonna to continue to brown a little bit. I'm going slowly. I have a few pink lady apples. Why do I like a pink lady? <laughs> so glad you asked. Pink ladies are consistent. They're available everywhere. They hold their shape when they cook. They are a good combination of sweet and tart. They are crispy but they're not too firm like a honey crisp, which you bake with. It's just like really stays all together. So a pink lady is a great apple. I definitely do want to core them. All right, so just using the apple core. Wow, it's quite a core. That was a little off center. I think I'm realizing right now as we do this, I don't own an apple core. So what I usually do at home is dumb and takes an extra step but I just slice it and then I go back through and maybe I use a spoon or a paring knife to take the cores out. This is more efficient, but you can tell it. I've like basically never done it before. And this is the other part where you like, wow. I think it's very dull. It's not me. And I wanna slice these crosswise into rounds and I don't wanna cut these super thin that might be pushing it a little bit. That's like a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna try to go a little thinner than that. They look like googly eyes. I hate Halloween, to be perfectly honest with you. It's not my favorite holiday. I don't know, one year I got egged. Oh. That wasn't fun. Another, I'm afraid of the masks. The scream mask is so scary to me. I just kind of get really nervous. And then, and then as a parent, it's like a nightmare because you're basically in an eternal struggle about how much candy am I gonna get. This is a lot of apples, probably more than we needed. I probably could have stopped after three. Probably, maybe, because it's this many apples, this isn't quite enough sugar. This is all fine. The sugar is gonna help browning. It's not enough to really add like a ton of sweetness. And that's that pinch of salt I was talking about. And this is the juice of half a lemon, which will be I don't know, 
couple tablespoons. And that's for flavor, not just, it's gonna help the apples not turn brown. Now all that's left to do is get the apples into the pan. And the only layer that really counts is the very top. So for the bottom, I wanna get them kind of close together so that there's nice layers in the finished tart. All right, I think that looks pretty good. I think it's gonna look pretty later. Here's that brown butter. And the milk solids inevitably are gonna have fallen to the bottom. Um, so stir it up as you go. You'll get some of these flecks. Which looks a little bit like vanilla, but it's not vanilla. And while this cooks, the juices are gonna come out. The juices are gonna mingle with the brown butter. They're gonna make a new flavor together. They're gonna get even toastier. And now I'm just brushing a little bit on the edge of the dough as well. It'll give it a little shine. <laughs> the gong. This amount of butter was kind of perfect. I'm gonna leave the tiniest bit so that when the tart comes out of the oven, I can brush it with a little butter and give it a little shine at the end. So this is going into a 400 degree oven, which I believe is ready over here. And I'm gonna set a timer for one hour. All right, one hour has elapsed. I'm gonna check on my tart. It looks pretty perfect. All right, so a couple of things that I'm looking for to make sure it's done. I want to see deep golden brown color all the way around the crust. The apples on top got really nice color. And then just pressing and looking at the ones on the bottom layer, I can tell that they're totally tender. So it's a perfect time to take it out of the oven. So now I'm taking just that tiny bit of residual brown butter that I held back from before. And while the tart is still warm, I just want to dab, just a little dab over the apples to shine them up. This butter will soak right in. So if you don't have the patience to wait for your tart to cool, or even if you do, either way, this is a good trick so that you're not doing this with the tart in your hand. Take a bowl, regular, ordinary bowl, turn it over, take your pan, just center it, and the ring drops away. Ta-da! Oh, it sounds flaky. A couple of things I want to show you. One is, look at the underside of the crust. Can you guys see that? That's because I pressed it really well against the tart bottom and got good contact, good heat conductivity, 400 degree oven, really good color on the bottom. There she is, beautiful rustic ring of apple tart. I hope that you try this, try the dough. Let me know how it goes, kind of like blueberry pie. I really love seeing the pictures of all the pies and stuff that you guys come up with. So it's apple picking season, it's fall, it's late fall, it's almost Thanksgiving. Please make rustic apple tart and let me know how it goes. So I'm feeling very pie proud right now, or tart proud, I should say. So let's just get a slice and we can see the different layers. Oh, crunchy. Get a nice little slice. And this little crispy edge just fell off. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's very flaky, it's really crunchy. I'm just gonna take a little bit of creme fraiche Sour cream would work too. Just get a little dollop going. Flaky layers of dough, many different layers of apples, really soft tender ones on the underside, really nice firm kind of roasty toasty guys on the top side. I feel like I should try it. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Another benefit of a tart, you can eat it warm pie you have to wait and wait and wait and wait for it to cool down the tart you just get into right away recommend next I have a few Here, let's just get that, that <laughs> okay. you got a bean facial yeah, we got it. 
Gabby just gave herself a bean facial. It's really, it's all the rage. <laughs>